Serda. I currently live in Los Angeles. I'm so excited and so grateful for this really amazing opportunity. Wonderful. Well, I'm Mayor Brooke, and it's so great to have you with us. Thank and you. I was able to tour around, and I love your artwork. Thank you. And I'm not going to steal one of the boys' questions, because uh, they have a couple of good questions. Um, as you were um, painting your pieces, what is it that's going in your mind that expresses who you are? So. The collection of, for, for this exhibition is called Drawing Her In. And I would consider myself an abstract painter, mm -hmm. but drawing has always been at the center of my practice. So I'm merging the figuration with the abstract. You know, really that harmony between the conceptual and the drawing and how the figures float across the surface. Um, I love Does it. that help? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, well, I love your work, and Thank you. Coral Springs is happy to have you. Thank you. I'm really so excited to be here and share this with the community, and this is my first museum show, mm. and it's, it's a really huge deal, and we walked in this morning to see it curated and teared up. And oh, beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we're happy to have you be a part of our community and have your expressions of who you are and representation of women. Thank you. And uh, your expressions are beautiful. Thank you. So we're very happy to have you here. And God bless you. You won't make me cry. <laughs> I'm going to ask, how long have you been painting for? I have been painting since longer than you are old right now. So how old are you now? Nine. Nine. So I would say my first memory was making art. Do you remember your first memory? Um, I do. <laughs> Think about it. Maybe, maybe Maxi? The yeah, yeah, probably. My dog. Yeah. So for a very long time. Yeah. And I love just to use a simple pencil, and I'm still using that after all these, nice. all these years. I love to paint too. I know you do. Fun. I've seen some of those beautiful paintings. Thanks. My question is, how do you come up with your ideas? Now that's a good one. Now, do you see something familiar in this show that is in your house? Uh, yes, some of your paintings. Okay, and now within those paintings, is there something specific that looks, um, that you remember? Yeah, like there's a little like lady in it. Okay. And I'm guessing that's you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is, so I do use um, my form as a reference. So with that idea of the female form trying to break down the line quality, make it very simple as a contoured drawing, and as she's kind of floating across the surface between two worlds. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I love painting too. You do? It's what very do you fun and uh, I just come up with that. whatever pops in my head first. I just mm -hmm. uh, paint it pretty much. And, and you like tools. Yeah. Yeah. You've helped me before open yeah. up those boxes. Yeah, building. But I really love painting and I think it's really cool. And do you like the color or do you like making it or do you like putting it together. I like like building shapes and stuff mm -hmm. on the paper. And sometimes just a simple shape can lead to something more. Yeah. California, how did you get your your vision about hmm. the paintings? Uh, hmm. Where did it come from? Hmm. Excellent question. So I've been working with the female form and telling stories about women f 
for as long as I can remember. So when, I would say, t over 20 years ago, I did a project and I created these sculptural dresses that were inspired by Virginia Woolf committed suicide by lining the pockets of her dress and she walked into a, a lake. So I conducted hundreds and hundreds of interviews of women about the weight that they carry, not their physical weight, but, but the weight, their emotional weight. And then I made these sculptures, freestanding sculptures, and it, it, it was hauntingly beautiful, but it was also an homage of the stories of women. I went on to do another installational project when I was living cut two years later in Los Angeles. And that was called the Los Angeles County Project. So I was investigating all of the missing women in Los Angeles County. So when you contact the um, Department um, of Justice, the photographic references that the families provide for the missing women are the photos when when they're looking for their loved ones. So I did a collection of thousands of drawings of portraits of the missing women. I did them on black paper with black charcoal. So it did reinforce that we couldn't see them. And they were installed in grids um, in different exhibition spaces. So to bring us now to the culmination of this show, calling, drawing her in, it's a story of transformation. So, so your talent is a blessing. A, a blessing? Blessing, your talent. Blessing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. So, How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. I appreciate all the hard work for this beautiful show that Oh, is we just hung hang it in. up. <laughs> and that's a hard work. A lot of work. So I have a softball question for you. Adversity, right? Yes. For us artists, shapes the way that our work looks, shapes what we communicate. So in your adult career as a professional, what do you find is the greatest struggle that you have with your artwork? So I think professional practices in the sense it would be twofold. One, I believe coming out of either undergrad or grad school, even when I graduated with an MFA, I don't believe institutions are preparing artists for what to do in the world. I mean, outside, yes, you make your art, you, you create what it is, but what is the next step professionally? So business practices, I think that's a, it's a huge struggle and no one speaks about it, it's taboo. <laughs> Um, so that's huge. I also believe, um, so my partner, he's, he's in the film business and we live in, in Los Angeles. There are multiple unions, you know, you could be a part of the Directors Guild or the Writers Guild or SAG, or even if you're a professional makeup or hair, you have a union. As visual artists, this does not exist. So if a gallery doesn't pay you, how do you fight the system? How do you do that? So you can join CAA for the College Arts Association, obviously, but if you're not working within an institution and you're just a uh, visual artist or a sculptor, or it's, it's for, for a group of creatives, what do we do to help facilitate how to protect yourself on the business aspect. You know, I think that's something that would be amazing to have, to, to have something like that, and just to, to help. Who, who do you call? Right, exactly. And I mean, different countries handle it differently. They but do. In the, where we're at, it's sort of, you're on your own. <laughs> you are, and you're not. So you have to survive it. You're right, you know. I mean, I was raised in a wonderful family here in Florida. We were very middle class, but no one, no one even teaches you the steps. How do you become an 
an artist. You know, all of those guidings, you can go to art school, you can go to undergrad, you can go to grad school, you can do residencies and apprenticeships and all these things, but there's still really no rhyme or reason. I even remember I went to FSU, a huge FSU fan. Um, they were incredible. My senior year, this is 100 years ago, I went to the director of the Career Center. We actually became very close. And I said, Dr. Jeff, I, I'm an artist. I'm coming out of school. What am I supposed to do? I can't go to the Career Center that they set up at you know, the, the, the giant halls. What kind of job? You know, I've always you know, been involved either working in a mu museum or running a gallery or working as you know, curatorial or in helping like that. But there's not a lot of guidance. And artists, it's, it's very difficult. I hope that answered your no, that, question. No, that does, I think. Do you agree? Do yes, you no, and I, I think that that would resonate with almost all artists yeah. coming up trying to you know, find their way. Right. Look for the resources. They're, they're out there. They're, they're out there. People and great with good people. advice. Exactly. But wouldn't it be better if we could come up with some sense of bringing that together? A system. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you for being here. I, I would. All right. I have two questions. One is what does having this museum show mean to you? Um, we'll start with that. Well, it's. It's been a journey. Um, the show originally was scheduled for 2020, and then the world shut down with the pandemic, and everyone has gone through so much and, and so many hardships. So finally, two years later, to have this, it's a, it's a dream come true. I mean, and to have my first museum show in my hometown, I'm gonna be crying. <laughs> It's a big deal. It's a big deal, and and it's also a big deal. I can say because I'm I am her partner, um, <laughs> but fiance. Um, what? It, why don't you let them know about how important it is mm. for women with museum shows? I think. How do you ever get a museum show until you get a museum show, <laughs> right? So we always joke at home. So Matt makes movies. Yeah. How, how do you ever get to make your first movie until you make your first movie, you know? So within the arts, it's, it's very difficult. And statistically, it's a very underrepresented of women having museum exhibitions, um, the collection of works being collected by museums by, by women. So it's incredible that this museum, Coral Springs, is embracing that and celebrating and the idea that the show opened on International Women's Day <laughs> during Women's Month and it's all about drawing her in yeah. and about transformation because I feel as if this time we've all transformed, you know? Then, good, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I think he has another no. one. No, no, I, <laughs> no. I, thank you. <laughs>